What's up guys and welcome to sunny and super hot Seoul, South Korea. Now, if you've been here before, then you probably know that this city is gigantic. So big that we've decided to actually change up the way we normally film. We are filming this video for Seoul in two parts. So part one will be today, where we explore all of the things in old Seoul. We're diving into the history and the past of this city. And then our next video will be all about the new trendy hit things to do here in Seoul. Honestly, I feel like I sound really weird when I say hip, but we're just gonna roll with it. But first, as usual, we gotta get a cup of coffee. Now guys, I gotta be honest, I'm not totally sure if this is gonna work out. We have seen in Seoul that most coffee shops don't open till like noon. So we're hoping that this one's open because the hours are not listed on Google Maps. So let's, let's hope that we get some coffee this morning. It might be a bit of a mistake just because it's so hot outside and this has a lot of milk in it. So I might be struggling throughout the video, we'll see. But this coffee's fabulous. We're actually at a place called Tidewater. I don't think I've specified that yet, but it opens at 11, which is a little bit later than usual, but we wanted to make this work. And the main reason why is because while this isn't like a super old historical coffee shop, it's built inside of the Hanok style uh, houses that you'll see throughout the villages that we visited today. So this feels old and it feels retro and it kind of fits with what we're trying to go for with this old soul video and the coffee's delicious. Also, we wanted to thank Alan and AJ for buying us these coffees through our Buy Me A Coffee page. We hope you guys are enjoying that cool Scottish summer and we hope you guys are doing well. All right, let's dive into old soul. So first up on our list of things to see here in Old Seoul is Gyeokbukgung Palace, but in order to go into the palace, you actually have to pass through a really famous gate, so we're gonna check this out first. Gwangwomun Gate serves as the main entrance to Gyeongbukgung Palace. The gate, which was built in 1395, has undergone several reconstructions over the centuries, but it maintains its traditional architectural style. Gyeongbukgung Palace was originally built in 1395 by King Taiho, who was the founder of the Joseon dynasty. It served as the primary royal residence and the center of government for the dynasty. The palace complex underwent expansions and renovations over the centuries, reaching its peak during the reign of King Sejong the Great in the 15th century. Throughout its history, Gyeongbukgung Palace witnessed various significant events including political ceremonies, royal weddings, and state affairs. Chances are, if you come to South Korea, you may come in the summer. <laughs> and it is hot. So it is be hot. Prepared. We were talking with someone who lives here last night, and they said that the seasons here are extreme. They very. said that the summers are very hot, and the winters are very cold. So if you come in the shoulder seasons, you're probably going to be in a better position than we are. But in any case, no matter what the weather is, this is still a really beautiful palace. The backdrop is amazing. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's beautiful area. I know we say this all the time, but I feel like it's really true when I say you can spend literally all day in here. So we're going to keep moving and keep moving on to the next spot, which is a historical village, about 15 minute walk from here. Village is a charming historical neighborhood situated between the two main palaces here in Seoul. The village is famous for its well-preserved Hanok houses, which are traditional Korean wooden homes dating back to the Joseon dynasty. These beautifully designed houses featuring sloping roofs, wooden beams, and traditional courtyards are creating such a picturesque and nostalgic ambiance. That door is a dream. I love this. This is so cute to walk around. I thought there would be more like cafes and stuff. There's not. I almost feel like we're just missing them. Yeah. Like we just wrong down, walked down the wrong streets yeah. the whole time. Winding 
winding streets and narrow passageways are perfect for Instagram if you can't tell by all these people taking pictures. So make sure to grab a picture. But like I said earlier, this is wedged between two palaces and one we haven't been to yet. So let's go. Oh, two? Oh, okay. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it says two. So you only get one ticket. It just says two people. Okay, perfect. Nearby Bokchon Hanok village is the massive Chongdeok Gung Palace. Dating back to the 15th century, this palace is set within a large park, but is unquestionably the crown jewel of the complex. Chongdeok Gung Palace was originally built as a secondary palace to the main palace of Gyeongbok Gung, with an emphasis on its setting. The intention behind building Chongdeok Gung Palace was to harmonize with the surrounding landscape. It's renowned for its meticulous secret garden known as the Huan, which was meticulously designed to create a serene and tranquil environment. The garden's layout and features exemplify traditional Korean landscaping principles, making it a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This garden alone makes this area of Seoul a can't miss if you're planning a visit. I <laughs> know. Uh, I feel like we've gotten really lucky today so far because the, the sun is like perfectly lighting up these temples and then also the contrast with the background of the blue skies is just, they're so beautiful. It's a beautiful day. It really is. I will say though, this is a beautiful day, but don't get it twisted. It's still really hot out. <laughs> It's 10,000 won for both of us to go into the secret garden, which we were gonna pay, but unfortunately you can't access it right now uh, unless you're on a guided tour. And the next guided tour is at 2.30. We got too much to do today, so we're gonna power through onto our next stop, uh, but we'll take our time as we mosey around out of here because this is a really beautiful place. about this next place for multiple reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is because we don't have to take public transit. It's like a 10 minute walk away. So that's really nice. Really nice. So one thing that we saw a lot in Japan and here in South Korea as well is people walk around and avoid the sun by having an umbrella over their head. And at first I was like, well, that's a little bit different. I'm not sure that's really for me. But Hannah told me this morning, she was like, we have to pack the umbrella. I think it'll help with my face because I get burnt really easily. And uh, it was a pro move. And now I'm holding the umbrella and she's not under it. And I feel really bad. Hannah, you want to get under it? Nearby is another Hanok village that we really wanted to check out. Ixiong Dong Hanok Village is a bit more chill and trendy than popular Bukchong Hanok Village. So this is a bit better for you if you're trying to miss some of the crowds. And this area has coffee shops, galleries everywhere. So it's a great part of town to just mosey around. I gotta be honest, this is probably my favorite of the Hanok villages that we're visiting today. I, I totally agree. It's a cool contrast to see the really old buildings with these really contemporary new different stores and yeah. restaurants and stuff like that. Yeah, I totally agree. The contrast is crazy, but it works. Another quick tip, don't come down here hungry because I'm already eyeing a bunch huh. of these <laughs> different spots to eat. Oh my gosh. Yeah, to piggyback on what she just said, if you've been following our channel for a while, or at least through this year, then you'll know that we've been in Southeast Asia. Between Southeast Asia and Japan, we've not really found a lot of bakeries and there are bakeries everywhere over here and my mouth's watering. All right, so we've traveled a little bit outside of the old part of Seoul to check out the War Memorial of Korea. Now, I don't totally know a ton about the topic, but I'm eager to go in here, pay the admission and learn a little bit more about it because it's a topic that unfortunately I don't know too much about.
The War Memorial in Korea is one of the largest and most comprehensive museums in the country, dedicated to preserving and commemorating the history of war in Korea and its impact on the nation and its people. The museum covers the history of conflict here in the country, ranging from ancient times to modern conflicts like the Korean War in the early 1950s. The museum is divided into several thematic halls, each focusing on different periods and aspects of Korean military history. If you're a history buff, then this is definitely going to be the place for you if you visit Seoul. It's very in-depth, uh, pretty interactive. It's a really cool museum. I guess it's a museum and a war memorial all in one, but it's a really beautiful, beautiful building and it's just really well done. I've not seen very many war memorials and war museums that are as in-depth and as nice as this one, honestly. This is gorgeous. We honestly planned on staying here a little bit longer and seeing more of the museum, but we run a little bit out of time. Time has slipped away from us today, so we have to run home real quick, get a little cleaned up for our festival tonight because we still have more to show you. Okay, time to see a bit more of Old Seoul. Now I know we've already visited two palaces today, but we wanted to come and get a view of one that was a little bit later in the afternoon. So we are at Deoksu Gong Palace, and according to all the blogs and according to everything we've been told, this was one that we could not miss out on seeing today. Deoksu Gong Palace is the smallest of Seoul's palaces, but it still holds importance and significance. What sets Deoksu Gong Palace apart from the others that we visited today is its blend of traditional Korean architecture and Western influences. Seok Jojian Hall and the Jok Jojang. Holy smokes, this is so hard. This is so hard. I'm trying my best, folks, I swear I am. Seok Jojian Hall and the Jok Jojang Hall are examples of this as these were added during the late 19th century to accommodate the king's efforts to modernize the country. The Aksu Gong Palace holds a unique place in Korean history due to its association with the final years of the Joseon Dynasty and the introduction of Western influences in the times that followed. I think what's cool about this palace as opposed to the others that we visited today is that this one's so central. It's right next to City Hall, which is actually a really popular drop-off point for DMZ tours. So if you do a DMZ tour and you get dropped off at City Hall, you might as well pop across the street here to Doksu Gong Palace because it's very, very central, very close by, and it's only a thousand won, which is like 77 cents USD. It's unbeatable. Also, I think this is the place, if you really want an accurate representation of Seoul, this is where you need to come. You have old Seoul with the palace mixed right in the middle of new Seoul with all the giant buildings around us. This is by far one of the coolest cities that we've been to in Asia because it blends old and new Seoul, which we'll dive into on our next video just so well. It blends them both beautifully. All right guys, I'm hungry, so it's time to go eat. And what better place to eat than the oldest restaurant in all of Seoul? Hannah, are you excited? So excited. A little nervous? A little bit. <laughs> okay. Trey's taking me down an alley, guys. The oldest restaurant in this Seoul. Is pretty, this is pretty cool. We did the oldest restaurant in the world last year. And Our now it's the- very first week of travel yeah. in Madrid. So this is kind of like full circle moment. Um, we just Another gotta find oldest. it. Yeah. Oh, it's right here. Oh. It says good restaurant on the outside, guys. Perfect. We walked in and there were a few people that were just like, hello, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> There's only three things on the menu. Is there more on the back? Oh. <laughs> 
I don't believe we've specified exactly where we are. We've said it's the oldest restaurant in Seoul. It dates back to 1904, and the name of it is Imun Seolnong Tong. Imun Seolnong Tong. I apologize if I just really messed up that pronunciation, but as we've said, this is the oldest restaurant in Seoul, and I've seen some conflicting things online saying that it's also the oldest restaurant in all of Korea. Get down in the comments and let us know if that's true or not. I'm not totally sure. Wow, that was nice. There you go. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. One. Okay. Two. You go. You go. Okay. One, two, three, you go. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so that's good to know. I'll do a lot of the green onions, Troy, so you don't have to. It was so nice of them to bring all of this stuff. I feel like we haven't done a really good job at explaining what all of this is. So kimchi is like the national dish of Korea. So when you go to restaurants, a lot of times you're gonna get it as like an appetizer or like just like a little side of it and with whatever dish you order. We haven't tried it yet because honestly it came out so fast. Yeah, so it was quick. It's all together. This is piping hot soup. I'm excited to try it. And Trey's really excited because they gave us so many green onions to add to it. Now. Yummy. Now. Okay. Oh, so it's not noodles, there's, it's just rice. There's like noodles and rice at the bottom of oh, the Oh, noodles too? I believe so. Oh yeah, I'm seeing some noodle-y shapes. So she said one, I'm gonna do two. And then she said two. This might be salt. It looks like salt. Oh, if it's salt, it's like rock salt. Yeah. Salt, okay. And then... So I'm gonna go easy on this first and kind of like slowly mix it in. This looks like one of those ice cream spoons. Yep. From like Dairy Queen or something. Yeah. We'll give it a little, little stir. A little stir. Okay. It needs more salt. It's good though. It kind of reminds me of like the broth of like pho. It's a very light soup. Yeah. Did I do okay? <laughs> yes? Okay. <laughs> Trey's going in for a potato. If I can ever grip it. So, it's not a potato. It could be a radish. I have no idea what it is. It's too crunchy to be a potato. It's got a little kick to it. It's not bad, in my opinion. But I'm also a very picky eater. Please don't judge me. But if you do, I don't blame you. Yeah, so oxbone soup is basically a brisket and then noodles, and then rice at the bottom. This is fabulous. I might add a little bit more of the spicy sauce. Thought I got enough, but I'm gonna need more of it. But first. Oh yeah, how was it? It was good. I would definitely compare it to like pho, where like I felt like we had to add a lot of yeah. stuff to make it really flavorful. Mm -hmm. So that's very similar. Rice is kind of the staple here in South Korea, so it kind of makes sense that there's rice in addition to the noodles. But we have one more spot to kind of walk off this meal, maybe grab something sweet, and just kind of stroll around. I don't have that plan, but Johanna's is manifesting the sweets. Well, we kind of had to skid out a lot of there because our next place closes at nine and it's currently eight o'clock if you can't tell because the sun's going down and Trey forgot his backpack. So we, he's currently running back and then we're gonna head to our next stop. <laughs> So from everything that I've read, Namsung Gol Hanok Village is really beautiful at any time of day, but it really, really shines after dark. Namsung Gol Hanok Village is a traditional Korean village located at the foot of Namsung Mountain. The village is beautifully lit up, creating a magical and nostalgic ambiance.
One of the main reasons you want to come here at night is because it's really lit up very well. The lanterns kind of give it this cozy, like really authentic feel. Unfortunately, we got here a little bit too late, so definitely get here before 8 o'clock so that you can really enjoy the entire village. We've only gotten to see a little bit because they've started closing down everything, but overall, this, from what we've seen so far, this is really cozy at night. We've seen a few couples walking around, so maybe a good little date night spot. <laughs> As we've said a few times today, Seoul does a great job of blending old and new. We did a lot of the old things to do here today, so it's only natural that in our next video we're going to be doing a lot of the new things here in Seoul. There is so much to see and do here. It's a very trendy city, it's a very hip city, so we're going to do our best to embrace all of it and show you as much as we can. If you want to be notified when that video is uploaded, make sure to hit that bell notification after you subscribe and like this video, and we'll see you in the next one.